happening it's late November and I just finished installing this uh, 300 watt off the grid solar system uh, I'm gonna try to get this video done in under 12 minutes but there's a lot I want to cover because it was hard for me to find it I want to share with you some design tips and give you some uh, insight into the different subsystems and uh, finish by telling you what this will do for you how much it costs and give you a final word of preparation and encouragement um, first, I want to let you know that this was designed to meet the current NEC guidelines, which changed quite a bit. Now you can see the three Renogy 100 watt panels, they're wired in parallel, and uh, they will charge the 12 volt battery system. Stepping behind, you can see I used 3 into 1 connectors. These are MC4 connectors. And I bought 30 feet of connectorized um, 8 gauge MC4 uh, cable, this is PV cable, photovoltaic. Cable. I cut that in half and uh, ran it through this Schedule 40 3 quarter inch gray PVC. That's not actually required because this cable is THHN, THWN rated, meaning it'll withstand heat and moisture. But I did buy a 30 foot section and cut it in two and I ran those cut ends through this cable, or rather through the, the PVC. Now here's a word of, uh, here's a good tip. Make sure you run that PV cable through uh, the conduit before you actually glue the conduit otherwise you'll never get it through so anyway this is the um, this is the mounting structure I used super strut and for these main support beams that's 1200 HS and then the solar panel frame is 1400 HS um, and I used all the super strut hardware I'll give you a peek at it here you can see the uh, spring nuts down there the uh, 90 degree butt elbows and the uh, square washers and that was used to attach the main to the uh, solar frame um, all the hardware that I used is 3 8 inch stainless steel and to prevent galvanic corrosion which can occur with dissimilar metals namely the aluminum frames and the uh, super strut I used 6 6 nylon washers you can see them down there they're white and I have those both above and below the the solar panel frame so that'll prevent uh, galvanic corrosion now the, these main supports are sunk down in the ground four feet I rented a, an eight inch auger and went down and uh, put those supports in there held them in place uh, while I poured concrete into the uh, uh, eight inch tubes I held them in place with other pieces of super strut um, bolted on and uh, just kind of stuck on the ground so that worked out good let that dry a few days and that'll uh, keep it pretty solid now this structure I have facing due south and I use the solar noon method to achieve that don't use your cell phone it won't work and this whole thing is uh, engineered to withstand 90 mile an hour winds which will handle most storms we get but uh, not too many tornadoes but good thing we don't get too many of those so uh, anyway currently this angle here is set at 26 degrees to uh, capture the the winter Sun and I can set it using these angle adjusters to various uh, angles at different times of the year and the summer will be set for 72 degrees so it'll almost be horizontal and your degrees uh, or angle of of incidence will vary depending on your latitude so you can look that up on the internet now let me go over lightning protection real quick I protected both this solar panel structure and the inside electronics by running um, six gauge electrical co uh, uh, conductor to this eight foot grounding electrode you can see the bonding clamps that hold those conductors in place and this one goes to the uh, solar frame itself here using those bonding clamps got one down there got another one up here and then one bonding clamp for each solar panel one two and then down there makes three these bonding clamps are tin plated copper they're ILSCOs ILSCO model GBL-4 DBT I would recommend those don't use uh, copper against the aluminum but that'll work out good stainless steel screws again and and star washers inside the nuts to uh, score those panels now the house penetration I'll show you next you can see the conduit schedule 40 goes underground it's a short run into the house here you can see the uh, silicone here and you probably noticed it at the other uh, schedule 40 entrance point as well silicone keeps it watertight you can see the electrode um, or rather the conductor coming out of the house going underground to the electrode as well um, Penetrating the house was a challenge. I, I got a 3 16 inch uh, Bit it was 18 inches long. I drilled a pilot hole 
and then I had to buy a one inch mortar bit to accommodate the three quarter inch uh, conduit. That one inch mortar bit I started here and drilled all the way through the wall. I couldn't get it from the inside of the basement because it's a finished wall and I got another six inches or whatever the case is to uh, uh, between the uh, drywall and the uh, cement itself. So had to drill from the outside and got a long expensive bit to do that but it worked out good. So that is the outside. Let me take you to the inside and show you what I did there. I think you'll find it helpful. All right, we're inside and I'll show you around. Hey, before we get started, um, one more piece of information regarding the structure, the super strut outside. If you're going to do something similar, those main support beams are have 36 inch center lines going down into the ground. And that'll line up real nice with the mounting holes in the Renogy panels if you uh, do a similar design. Okay, so the PV cable and the grounding conductor come through the wall via Schedule 40. A little bit of silicone in there to keep the cold air out. Into a breaker box. It's a Square D QO series uh, breaker box. I'll show you inside. There is a 40 amp dual pole breaker right there. Um, both the uh, positive and negative PV cables go to that breaker so I can shut down the power coming in from both uh, positive and negative. And then these white wires go over to a digital voltmeter that I'll show you later. And then um, these, uh, these uh, copper conductors are for the lightning protection and grounding. I grounded all the chassis of the electronics so this uh, circuit breaker box itself is, is grounded. And then one of the wires on the side goes over to the solar controller, the other one goes over to the inverter. And then the one on the bottom goes over to the battery bank to the negative terminal. Uh, recommended to, to ground one point only of your negative uh, circuit and mine's at the battery. From there I got six gauge wire going over to the solar controller. This is a Mar Morningstar TS45. 45 amp PWM type controller which is great for uh, smaller systems. Anything over 300 watts and you might want to consider an MPPT controller which is more efficient in delivering power but it's also uh, considerably more expensive. From the solar controller, we go down to the battery bank, and um, again, six gauge cables going through a 60 amp ANL type fuse over to the positive uh, terminal of the battery bank, and then from there, we use two gauge cable going up to the to the inverter through a DC disconnect, uh, and also through this 200 amp ANL fuse. This DC disconnect is a Blue Seas, a nice little unit, and then the inverter is a Whistler Pro 1600. Uh, it's a 1600 watt inverter, converts DC power to AC power so you can use it in your house. It has a, a peak rating of 3200 watts and for uh, high startup currents. And uh, the 200 amp fuse will, will cause this thing to shut down at 2400 watts. So that's the way I got that set up. Um, also, this is a, uh, a little box I got from, from Radio Shack. It was about seven bucks. I put these uh, two little digital voltmeters in there measuring the solar panel voltage and the battery voltage. I got those voltmeters on Amazon for about six bucks a piece. They're uh, made by Smackin, S-M-A-K-N, and they were really cheap. I also made a couple of uh, charts so I can quickly see what's going on with the system. This one is uh, relative to the uh, solar controller, and this is just a general one to, for the uh, solar panels themselves. So that, those are the electronics. Let's take a look at the battery bank. I got three batteries wired in parallel. They are 100 amp hours each, delivering a total of 300 amp hours. And um, they're UB12-1000s, uh, deep cycle, maintenance free. They don't give off much uh, hydrogen gas. They don't need a lot of venting. They're no problem in an indoor environment like this. So that's why I chose those. Um, and also, just want to make note, to uh, distribute the load over the batteries and uh, evenly, I've got the electronics connected diagonally, so all the negative leads to the electronics are here, and all the positives diagonally connected here. So, diagonal configuration works good. And the cables I made myself, uh, I bought a crimper online, and, uh, and I'll show you what it kind of looks like. I've got these ring, ring terminals on eBay crimped them using this uh, Tesco, rather Temco crimper. This is an awesome little thing. I put it in my vise and it crimps those down real nice. Finished it up with some uh, shrink wrap to make it look good. And uh, that saved me quite a bit of money as well. So I'll talk about costs next and uh, what you can actually do with this system. 
and, uh, and some other information. I'll switch views and talk to you in a minute. Okay, so it's almost a wrap. Now, what will this system do for you? It will provide a modest amount of power during a grid outage. Um, basically, we got a 12 volt system, 300 amp hours of batteries. You multiply those two together and you get 3,600 uh, watt hours of power, available power. You don't really want to discharge your batteries all the way. I'm going to try to limit mine to 30% discharge, which gives me about 1080 watt hours of power, which will power a 100 watt light bulb for, for 10 hours. So that's, that's the math. During a grid outage, this will power my small refrigerator and my chest freezer for a few hours a day just to keep the food fresh and also provide some lights and other conveniences. So that's during a grid outage. Um, this winter, we're going to test it. And we're going to try to grow vegetables. So we'll power a seedling mat, which will help the seeds to sprout. And then we'll power some grow lights. So I'll let you know how that works out. Now, what does this cost? The average cost of, a, of an installed solar system is about $7 to $9 per watt. If you do it yourself, it's going to be a lot less expensive like I did. This system cost me about $5 a watt installed times 300 watts, $1,500. And that's after the 30% federal tax credit that I get to take this year. So about 1500 bucks after uh, the tax credit, which is expensive, but for me it's worth it to just to be prepared, you know. And I, I value being prepared, not only how I should live, but how I should die. And I think every person that's still breathing should consider those things as well, which is in closing, I just want to talk to you about something that's really important to me. And that is that there's still um, hope, that there is a God, and that his divine qualities and his power have been revealed in the creation so that we are without excuse. Everyone knows that there's something more to this life and that this all just didn't happen by chance, right? But it's typically fear or pride that get in the way of us turning towards God. So. I just want to say that truth does exist, and by its very definition, it's exclusive. We can't all be right in our view of God. He's revealed his truth in his word, the Bible. If he can preserve the solar system and the universe, he can certainly preserve how he wants to reveal himself through the written word, through human authors. So, um, Truth does exist, and I want to urge you to do a sincere search for truth because it matters. It matters so, so much. And when you do, I guarantee that you will find the person of Jesus Christ, God's Son, sent for you. And if you turn to him in, in faith, faith as small as a mustard seed, he will receive you, he will forgive you, he will guide you, he will love you, and he will grant you eternal life. This life is so short and so brief, and eternity is so long. I urge you to search for truth. It's really important. I don't want you to be uninformed about solar, and I don't want you to be uninformed about God. So, I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Peace, world.